ladies and gentlemen, we got a special guest in the building. Mr. Self-Proclaimed, Christine's Horn's favorite student, <laughs> Ronnie Hudson II. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I, I threw that in, man, we, we were joking about that. I said, yeah, that's, that's yeah. too funny. <laughs> too, too funny. Now, nice. you, you, you originally from Atlanta? Yeah, I'm, I'm from I'm from Georgia, like I said. So I grew up in a small town called Watley, Georgia. I lived in Atlanta for about five years, but yeah, I grew up most of my life in Watley, Georgia. That's where I was raised. Um, so very, like I said, very small town. We got like one traffic light, about two thousand people. Um, like I said, that's the that's the city that 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 made me, you know, who I am. And then I went off to college. I lived in Atlanta. Um, went to Georgia Tech um, for like I said that five year time, and then started moving around to different areas, went to Philadelphia, and now I'm here in Illinois, so. Cool, cool, cool. So, what, um, what, how did your acting journey start? Like, what got you into acting? Yeah, man, so, like, like acting for me has been something that, like, it's, it's like, for most people, it's always been a, a, a dream, um, something that I felt I could do, like I said, growing up in, in a small town where I was, I didn't have, we didn't have access to anything. There wasn't uh plays going on there wasn't classes or none of that kind of stuff going on so i was never exposed to any opportunities to get involved in theater or any kind of acting growing up it just was watching tv like man i could do that but it's like that's that's way in la that's hollywood there's no way i can do that from where i am right now so i just kind of put it in the back burner and started you know just doing like most people do i played sports um mm -hmm. played sports played video games that was my thing growing up and and my career path, I chose a whole different career path, with, um, which I'm still in today. Uh, mm. I became an engineer. I, I went, like I said, I went to Georgia Tech and I got a, a bachelor's in electrical engineering. Um, mm. left, left there when I got a master's in systems engineering. So all of that, mm -hmm. kind of like I said, acting was still, like I said, on the, on, on the back burner until I got here to uh, Peoria, Illinois in 2012. Um, nice. and I saw all of the opportunities that were, that were around me. There were like, all of a sudden I hear people saying, yeah, I got to go to rehearsal tonight. You know, we're doing the color purple over here at, at the theater, or we're doing sister act, or we got to kill a mockingbird. And I'm like, wait, what, who, who, who wh where, like, who's like, <laughs> they do that kind of stuff here. And it was right. like, oh, snap. and so it was, it was that year. Like, and I think that was in 2015. And right. it was at that point where it was just like, oh, snap, I got a chance to get involved in some of these things I wanted to do to actually see if I can really do this. And so and that's kind of where it started. I jumped in um, my first play. Um, shout out to uh, Anthony Hendricks, a uh, guy um, locally here in this area who wrote an original play called uh, Strangeland. Um, mm -hmm. It was a musical. Um, so we had to do a little singing and everything as well. So that was the first time I actually got on stage and that show it was just a one weekend show we had three shows that show is what really sparked the fire in me because i went right from that show to the um local community theaters and i had a a principal role in uh memphis the musical that they mm -hmm. was doing here at the time and so i played bobby dupree and so that that was really when it just kind of took off and i think from that moment over the course of the next four or five years after that um i did about 10 or 11 uh, musical stage plays and it just kind of just ballooned from that point and I just tried to figure out at that time once the pandemic happened mm -hmm. how can I transition into uh, TV and film oh man um, before we go any further man could you uh, you tell us how God provided along the way for you man <laughs> like I said uh, none, none of this would be possible without God like I said I, I uh, gave my life to Christ when I was 14 um gotcha. and on on august 27 1999 like i said i remember the exact date at the barbershop shout out to all of my mentors harold moore gabriel moore um one of my best friends troy taylor down uh, down in Watley, georgia um right. we kind of like i said we got together during that time and like i said it was really you know i mean we used to go up to the barbershop have bible study uh prayer meetings and groups and just 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 really digging in like i said at the very young age of, of 14 so um, I mean, ever ever since then, like I said, I've uh, like I said, I owe everything I I have to God. Like I said, He has like I said, never failed me. Um, like I said, my relationship uh, with Him 
just, I mean, just through providing for me, coming through, coming through school, coming from a small town, like I said, in Watley, Georgia, being able to, to survive through all of that. And as a, as a black man here in America, moving to, to Illinois, just the opportunities and the favor that he's presented me with, the people that he's put me in front of. Like I said, I had having the opportunity to meet Christine Horn and some of the other people that she, uh, all of her mm-hmm. connections and things like that. Like God, God is really, like I said, he is the focal point of my life. And, and I owe everything that I am, the person that you see, it, it all it all goes to God, man. Nice, nice, nice. Man, that's that's pretty dope, brother. That, that's my, actually my first time hearing about, you know, uh, having a Bible study from people at your barbershop and everything, man. And, uh, and we love hearing that, too, because we know how this business is. We, we act this, too. We know you gotta lean Absolutely. on somebody. You gotta lean on something. You the, you the right one to lean on. In yeah. Business. Yeah. yeah. Right one to lean on. And um. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And you you touched on you know being uh, a part of electrical engineering and everything, and you know bouncing act and everything. You still do that. But one more, one more. Hey, right, brother, I gotta ask you about this now. You a Lakers fan? Yes, I am. <laughs> man, man, look, hey, man. Look, be honest. I'm yes, pulling I for am. you. I'm pulling for you in this series, man. I'm just letting you know. I'm I'm, pulling, for I'm, team, I'm, I'm, pull, I'm pulling, and then I'm not because I I <laughs> like Steph Curry, and then I like LeBron, so I'm I'm torn between the two. Like I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna put it like this. Like I mean, this series, like I mean, the Lakers were the seventh seed. This season was supposed to be, you know, down oh. the drain until until we made some trades and things started to pick up. Like so, there's no there's no expectations really right now. I mean, granted, with the healthy AD, healthy LeBron, if AD decides to actually play. Every game, they go. They they could be they could be hard to beat. But like I say, I'm a Lakers fan. Like I say, I'm from Georgia. Hawks is our team. But like I said, I never really been a Hawks fan. Like I said, I I, I, said, I started out. No, I mean I was a I was a Bulls fan as well. I was a Jordan fan. You know, during during the time I grew up. But then right. you know, this guy from Lower Marion High School, Philadelphia, 1996, got drafted. Kobe Bryant kind of. Just, I mean, like I just got attached to him. Like Kobe, Kobe's kind of like a, like a, the the brother, one of the one of the brothers I, I I didn't have, and I felt like I knew him, never met him, but it was just one of those things where I started following Kobe in '96, and that's when I became, a, like I said, became a Lakers fan. I've been rolling up, rolling with the Lake Show ever since. So yeah, we we're gonna try to go get that thing this year. We're gonna see what we can do. We coming home tonight, so you know we, we should we should go back to San Francisco up three one. That's my that's my uh, prediction. Lakers in Lakers in seven. That's hey, what's up. Hey, come on, man. Please, please. Bro. Got no go state, man. <laughs> man, give me some troubles, man. Now, yeah. Yeah. When you when you're not uh uh you know acting or, or working or anything, um, other than watching the Lakers, of course, what do you else do you do in your downtime? <laughs> yeah, man, I'm like I said, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a husband. Um, I have I have two kids. Uh, majority of my time is spent like and the crazy part is one one is uh, my daughter is eleven. My son is one and a half. So there's a big gap between them. So there's a lot of different uh, things that we have to do. Like I said, being a father um, at this time and 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 just trying to spend time with with, with my wife whenever I can. Like I said, I I owe it all to her to mm-hmm. allow me to like I said because I'm I'm pretty much gone all day. Like I like I said, I work full time as as an engineer for Caterpillar while I'm here to earn a living and to provide for what we have here while I try to pursue and build up this acting career. And then uh, there's times where you know after I get off work, a lot of times I have to drive up to the city to Chicago for projects, for rehearsals, you know, to film. And I'm gone like tons of um, most most of the time. And you know, my wife is able to allow me to do that. She takes care of the kids, takes care of the house. Like I said, so I like I said true gratitude to her for doing that. But like I said, most of the time, that's, I mean, that's really what I'm doing. Whenever I have some free time and free moments and downtime, like I said, I try to do some things with, with the family, um, spend some time with my kids. And if they are occupied or doing something else, then yeah, usually, you know, it's, 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 it's watching sports, man, playing fantasy football. I can't wait till the football season, you know, we're ready to get that started back up and, you know, just doing, doing some video games and trying to, Get myself back in shape. That's another thing. Like I said, I'm, I've been trying to hit the gym recently, uh, <laughs> so yeah. you know how you know how that goes. So I'm trying to get back in the gym and just trying to exercise and and kind of get moving again. So that's really what I do. Other than like I said, most of my time is spent at work or acting. I'm usually 
you know, studying, doing some self tapes, auditioning, trying to, you know, just hone the craft and get better. But that's mostly what I do, man. Yeah. And, and and shout out and shout out to your your wife because a lot of people don't understand doing this business, you gotta have someone that is very supportive and understanding. Uh, my wife is the same way too. Is it, it wouldn't be possible. It just it just it it would be hard moving forward, Absolutely. especially with there's kids involved, man. So man, good for you, man. And uh yeah. Uh but besides winning an award for uh for best film um actor. Uh, what do you do? What 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 is your greatest achievement? Hmm. Greatest achievement with, within within acting or yes, just sir. overall? Yes, sir. So like, yeah, with, with, I mean within I mean at this point, like I said my my greatest achievement to this moment in my in my opinion, like I said, my I set out this whole goal um, since I started pursuing TV and film um, right. has been to actually get on TV, and yeah. uh, I was able to this year. Um, yeah. finally booked, you know, my first co-star on Chicago PD. Um, so my episode aired on uh, March 29th. I was, uh, like I said, attacked officer in season 10, episode 17. Mm -hmm. Um, Out of the Depths is the episode name. I had a chance to work with, uh, LaRoy Hawkins and Marina Scorsiati, um, in that scene who plays, uh, obviously, uh, Atwood and Burgess. Um, so yeah, that, that honestly, to this point, like I said, probably is, is my greatest achievement. And, and, and one of the things that, like I said, I set out to do, that was one of the goals. I checked, I checked that box off, um, early this year. Um, I was, all, I also signed, um, with, uh, my agent with talent by Alexander. Um, I was with, uh, Hayes talent for a year. Um, and then earlier this year, January, I moved over to talent by Alexander. So once, like I said, and things just started to roll and things started to happen, um earlier this year and so yeah that's that's that, that that is the biggest thing i would say signing with that agent and then being able to book that first co-star on chicago pd which is like one of my target shows that i set out to be on when i first started this nice nice phenomenal phenomenal job too man i know we are <clears throat> we all try to book those co-star roles and especially chicago pd that that's the show right there yeah, that, right. <laughs> yeah that's the show they that i love it man and um so I would I would say that you know you know it's it's a writer strike going on, and uh everybody Absolutely. you know fearful and everything we've been talking about it, but um what 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 would you tell you know other actors out there what they should do during this downtime? I mean it, because it really in our roster really not a downtime. You can always find something to do, but what would you personally say that others should do during this time? I mean it's a time like it's a time even 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 for myself right now it's a time that it's time to re reset and reevaluate. I mean, look at your marketing materials, look at your headshots, look at, you know, the things that you're putting out there, your clips, um, and kind of kind of get ready. Because when we come out on the other side of this, there's going to be work, there's going to be time, it, it's gonna, you're going to have to hit the ground running, so you want to make sure that you're prepared. Um, but in addition to that, like I said, ju jump into to some classes, like just continue to hone the craft. Um, yeah. There's tons of, like I said, tons of things to do. Like myself right now, I have three independent projects that's, that I'm that I'm involved in right now. In the Chicago I, area, I'll be sh starting to shoot a, uh, a feature film where I play one of the leads. Uh, we're starting that next weekend. Um, there's a, another film that I have a couple scenes that I have to shoot, and then another uh, a series that that we're starting. So all of that's coming up right here in the the May June time frame um, with some additional opportunities in the works. So honestly, those are the things that you that that you can do and get involved in because without the obviously the networks and and so forth um, with the writer strike going on. You know the, the the independent writers and artists that are out here, like I said, we still trying. They're still trying to make content. So we got, right. you know, especially especially if you're uh, non-union or whatever, and you can still do union uh, non-union projects. You know, this is the opportunity yeah. right now where you can you can still work that muscle and still be able to put content out and and continue to move. So that's ultimately what I'm trying to do. But then also just just rest and and kind of relax, take a take a break because a lot of times when we're in the season, pilot season is gone. Episodic season is rolling. We auditioning constantly. We don't get a chance to take any vacations. We don't get a chance to really just step back and, you know, relax and and, and kind of just get our mind uh, together. And so I say at this at this point, take some of that time to kind of to kind of reset, work on your mental health, make sure that you're in a good place, so that when with this all when we're on the other side of this, you know, it's time it's time to, it's time to go. Yeah, agreed. Now, um, as far as you played, you know, 
a few characters. Um, do you have a favorite character that you've played so far that you've been able to portray? And what is your dream role? What's what's the character that you, if you envision your dream character or dream role that you get to portray, what would that be? Yeah, uh, I would say, so favorite character that I've probably played was obviously when I was doing theater, I had a chance to um, do A Raisin in the Sun. Um, mm. And I was able to play Walter Lee. Um, and, and that, and that, that probably was, <laughs> that probably was my, like I said, my, my, my favorite That's show true. out of all the 10, 11 shows that I, that I was able to do just because of, like I said, the, just the depth that that character had to bring and the trend that, that the, the entire, uh, arc of, of nice. his character from the beginning of the show to the end. Like I said, I, I had a blast, uh, putting that character forth on stage and, and really the, I guess the response i got from the audience every night and people coming up to me afterwards is really what kind of put this thing in my head like man you 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 decent you might be okay at this you know you should see mm -hmm. you know if there's opportunities to like i said earn a little earn a little money a little pay for it let's go try to pursue uh getting on tv and film and so that's kind of when it started because that show was uh uh march of 2020 right before the world shut down and so when we finished it was kind of like, boom, I had that bug in my ear and, and everything shut down. And I just started training and taking classes online. And, and and you know, I'm here where I am today. But that's probably my, uh, like I said, my favorite character, a character that I really want to play, something I really want to do. I've always wanted to. I, I love those, uh, like, crime, drama, courtroom type of shows. Like I said, the the law and order, the PDs and all this kind of stuff. So I really want to be, a, like I said, have a series regular as some type of, attorney lawyer you know mm. that 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 type of thing where you know i get like i said we get to, i get to get in that courtroom and interrogate someone on the stand do that type of thing do that whole thing that's 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 really what i've been i haven't had a chance to do that yet i've played a cop i've done these other things i've played the father and and done some commercials and things like that but being that that law that law drama is is mm, something yeah. that i'm that i'm looking forward to having an opportunity to do Nice, nice. So you gonna send somebody to jail? Yeah, man. I mean, or, or, or help them from getting, or keep them from going there. So either either one. <laughs> he innocent, boy. He innocent. Yeah, I gotta, gotta, gotta defend my client. You know what I mean? Gotta, gotta let him know. <laughs> I love it, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, man. Even if, Come even on. if I gotta be a little dirty, you know how it is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I got you. Yeah, you gotta get your hands dirty every now and then, man. Oh, yeah. know, we we seen the wire and we seen you know all these other shows. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah we, we get it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, a couple more questions. We uh we we wrap you up and get you out of here. Um, now if you you live in Atlanta, but uh, so if you could give back to community, to the community, what what would you do? Like, you ever thought about about doing that, or what? Or is there anything that you do now that the audience doesn't know about? Well, yeah, I've been, like I said, as far as uh, community, like I said, I, I do a lot um, from the, I guess, the engineering perspective. Because, like I said, I'm, I'm here in Peoria, Illinois. So in my in my day job, on, on like I said, on the engineering side, there's a lot of activities that I'm involved in with the National Society of Black Engineers mm -hmm. um, and the local chapters and stuff that we have here to promote STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math, and really... Uh, pouring back into kids as they are growing up to let them know that there's opportunities in that space. Um, nice. As a, like I said, as an actor and in the theater, I also serve on the board of, of one of our, our local theaters here in Peoria, Peoria um, Players Theater. You know, so I'm on, I'm on, I'm on the uh, board of directors there. And so I try to give back and, and I've been, um, like I said, I'm the uh, diversity and inclusion uh, chairperson for the board. Uh, this is actually, like I said, it's my last year of my term um, that I'm serving. So I'm hoping to try to, you know, leave some people with some things that I, I was not yet able to implement so I can um, pour, put it into the, you know, the next board so that they can try to continue some of these ideas and things that I have. But uh, those are some of the things, like I said, that, I, that I've been doing now trying to get, you know, more um, African-Americans and uh, people that look like me in theater. Because when I joined theater, like I said, here in this area about uh, five, six years ago, uh, there's not many people that look like me. I was the kind of the, I felt like I was the go-to um, African-American male 
that mm-hmm. they would always come to. So if there was a role that they needed, oh, they needed some black guy that was tall, strong, with a strong voice that could do something. Hey, is Ronnie available? Let, let's call Ronnie. It was like it was constantly just me. And I'm like, there's so much more talent here in this area that y'all mm. haven't tapped into because for one, right. they don't do we don't do a lot of good advertising. People don't know what these shows are. If you're not into musicals and plays and stuff like that, you if you don't follow that stuff, you're not gonna know when you see a title up on a up on a marquee that this right. theater is about to do this show. You're not gonna know what that is. What is that? Who what is that for me? So you gotta do some marketing and let people know um what's available and so that's one thing that i've been trying to push um for the theater and trying to let more people in the african-american community to know that the arts is an opportunity as well so it kind of all blends together like i said it comes from like i said from stem with the arts they call it steam now so you got science technology engineering uh arts and math and so i'm a big proponent of promoting all of these um aspects in the community trying to make sure that uh you know, these these students have opportunities and that they know that these dreams are attainable and that they can go out there. And so that's kind of where I've been spending a lot of my time to as far as giving back to the community is concerned. Cool. Cool. Love it, love it brother. Love it. Thank you for doing that, too. Yeah. Definitely, absolutely. Like I, said, you got, I mean, you got to, man. You got to pay it forward. Like every, I, I've had people that have poured into me and that have created who I am and, and just have constantly gave me nuggets here and there and like I said, I was a I'm a I'm a product of the National Society of Black Engineers coming through school. Um, mm-hmm. I was able to get you know some of the jobs that I was able to get to this point through that, and so I always want to continue to get get involved, continue to give back, and and try to you know you know help help that next one, you know reach each one, teach one, and and reach back up. Like I said, as as I climb, I want to help somebody else come with me. So I don't want to. You know, it, it, I don't want it to be lonely at the top. You know, as they yeah. say, as you go up, it's lonely at the top. Now I don't want to be lonely. Y'all come on up here. Let's let's be up here together. So that's that's the way I am. Got gotcha. everybody. Yeah. Gotcha. 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 Um, what's the best advice someone uh ever shared with you? Ooh, man, the best advice. Man, I mean, honestly. This, I mean, there's so many things, so many nuggets that I can take from all over the place. Uh, like, I, I mean, mo- mostly, like, I mean, honestly, just I would take, I would say something I learned from 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 Christine Horn as through the time working with her um, is and it's and and it's kind of all about confidence and knowing that I belong here. Yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah. I, I, you know, yeah. I belong, I belong in this room, you know, because yeah. a lot of times when, when as, as actors, you know, we, we go in these rooms and it's kind of intimidating. We, we know you're, you're a little, you know, you've got these people up here, you're trying to audition and you feel like, uh, you know, you're you yeah, a little, little, yeah, a little yeah. scared, a little, a yeah. little, a little timid. Yeah. But at the yeah. same time, like I said, Christine has always told us, like I said, we, we, we belong there. I mean, we're in this room for a reason. Like yeah. we, we got called here for a reason because we are supposed to be there. And so that kind of stuck with me to let me know that, hey, when I walk in this room, I got to walk in with my chest high, that I, that I am the answer. I'm the solution to, to their problem. These casting directors are trying to find, uh, they, 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 try and they, they got a problem. They're trying to find a, a, a person for a role. I walk yeah. in the room, I'm, I am the, I'm the answer. Come on so, now. So, so going in with that confidence already is going to affect my performance and going to let me be able to put my best foot forward. And so yes. that's one thing that, like I said, she has tr- tried to always uh, instill in us is to make sure we have have that confidence to go in and and to and and I and I use that with everything I do in any room I I, I approach where it comes even if it's, if it's my day job if it's something involving my wife if it's something if anything when I walk in the room I know that I'm I'm supposed to be there and I'm and and I'm destined for what it is that I'm there for. It's all about manifestation. It's all about, you know, just exuding that confidence and and so, and, and knowing for, for certain that this opportunity right now is in front of me because it was my destiny. Gotcha. Yep. Someone told me the same thing, brother. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's a beautiful I mean, response. That's, I mean, that's ultimately what, it, what, it, what it's all about. I mean, if we go in there timid, we go in there scared, you're going to show it in your performance. Yeah, you're you not going to be able to bring your foot best foot forward. Yeah, you are. Yeah, you are. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, and it's even when you do get casted, you still like, 
had a doubt was, well, are they supposed to pick me? It's like, no, they picked you for a reason. They picked you for a reason. Yeah. And I, like, so I could tell a story of when I was, when I booked Chicago PD and I got to set, I was so nervous. Like I had never been yeah. that scared before. <laughs> yeah. The, the anxiety that went <laughs> yeah. through my body, even yeah. though I went through the, I had already done the audition and it yeah. like I said, it was like two, three lines, but just getting, <laughs> getting to that set, and then there, there's uh, LaRoyce Hawkins, there's uh, Marina, and I'm just like, oh, snap. So it's just like all, all of the all the butterflies, everything. It was just so much anxiety that I was like, I, I don't know if it showed on my face because I tried to I tried to keep cool. I was just sitting there. I didn't want to be that guy that's <laughs> up there trying to take pictures with him. Like, hey, let me take him. Let's get a selfie and do all this stuff. <laughs> I was just, you know, I'm trying to, you know, like Very just trying cool. to tell myself, like, oh, you belong here. You've been here before. You know, yep. this ain't your first time. You know, just let them know that you that you you wanted them, like, and so that whole, like I said, that whole experience, like I said, you get on set, you still a little scared, but you have to just tell your mind that you know, hey, I I, I belong here. They called me here for a reason. Um, they liked the way I did my job on my audition. It's time time to just do the same thing to work. And if they if there's something they want to change, like I said, the director will give you that that redirect, and you just follow instructions and just keep going, man. Yep. Yeah, and it works out too. It really does. Man, yeah, love it, love it, and appreciate you, brother. Thank you so much for sharing those gems and all that, man. Your knowledge and everything, man. We got to get you come back, man. We got to get you come back. Really enjoyed you. Oh, definitely, man. I I I appreciate this. Like uh, another another thing, Christine told us, like never miss an opportunity to be seen. So that was one thing. Like I've been trying to, I've been trying to do more. Mm -hmm. uh podcast more interviews like i said i think this is the second one that i've done um and i thank you guys for like i said obviously for for reaching out and giving me this opportunity so i definitely want to you know continue to put myself out there continue to tell others about what i got going on um a lot a lot of projects coming up like i said a lot of opportunities i'm even trying to start getting into a little directing and producing trying to make some of my own content and not just kind of wait you know and mm -hmm. so that's 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 one thing so we want to yeah, so any opportunity I have to come and share anything that I've learned and pour back into anybody uh, is, is definitely, you know, I'm grateful for those opportunities and willing to do that whenever whenever the opportunity arises. So appreciate y'all guys yeah, for, for, for bringing me on. Man, appreciate you. And uh, could you just tell our audience where they can follow you at? Absolutely, man. I'm all over social media and, <laughs> and every one of them, uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, TikTok is Ronnie Hudson I I for the second. Ronnie Hudson the second. Same uh, <laughs> same tagline everywhere. You know I try to keep it simple. Uh, so that way you, when you Google Ronnie Hudson the second, all my information should come right there. Uh, Instagram, like I say, Instagram is what I use majority of the time to uh, post. You know the things that I got coming up and my life and everything that's going on. Um, and so, yeah, Instagram and Facebook, but yeah, I'm, I'm on Twitter, TikTok, all of it. Ronnie Hudson, I, I. That's nice, nice. Howdy, have a good one, bro. Be blessed. All right, guys, y'all too. Right. Appreciate it. Appreciate you.